Now with houses being built taller and properties being smaller, finding space to create an outdoor oasis becomes more and more difficult. In a townhouse like this, we've got a flat roof on top that we can capitalize on. And we're gonna finish this space to create that wonderful environment. Now here, this flat roof drains off the back of the townhouse and we've created a framing structure on top. This framing structure is made out of pressure treated 2x4 lumber, connected together with proper saddles so it's nice and strong. It's been leveled out and we've got these styrofoam feet that sit on top of the roofing membrane. It allows the water to run in between and off the top. Now on top we've got this membrane that wraps over the top. This is to make sure that the water runs off the top where the screw penetrates so we don't get any rotting there. It's done with this flashing membrane here. It's kind of a roofing membrane. It's about three inches wide. It wraps on top perfectly. Now the design here encompasses an open space for some seating here. We've got some rock garden areas. We've got some planter boxes designed. I've even designed a wall with a TV in it and a bar area. So it's going to have everything you could want when you want to spend time out here. Now on top we're using an Azek uh, roofing material. It's a product that's from their vintage collection. It's dark hickory. It's a beautiful dark color. I love the product. It's going to perform well up here, especially with the amount of sunlight and the beating it gets here. Now we're waiting for the truck to arrive so we can get going with the next phase. And actually, I hear the truck coming now, so the next phase is going to start shortly. rolling with the installation, the frame is done and we're starting with our first few strips. The substructure is one of the most important aspects of this job or any job. Um, it needs to be perfectly square and level. If you don't take the time to make the framing square, once you start putting your decking boards down, they're square. And when you go to the ends, all of a sudden you get angle cuts and the end result is not appealing. So it's really worth it to spend the extra time to make sure that the decking is square. Make sure it's level. You don't want any ridges between the boards where you're gonna catch your toes. And then make sure it's strong and sturdy. The pads underneath, the styrofoam pads that we put, they gotta be glued in place. You don't want them falling out of place. Once that's done and the framing starts going, it's an easy process. Uh, the installation of the framing is fairly simple. Once you start from one end and you have a plan, it's like dominoes. Um, we've created some shims out of wood blocks. You can buy shims uh, that are plastic or acrylic, uh, but you want to use them. You want to use shims because you want the gaps very consistent. The fasteners themselves that hold the decking down, there's two systems. There is a system where there is a groove down the sides of the boards and they're hidden fasteners that go in between the boards and the driver fits in between the boards and you screw the fasteners down. Well, they kind of hold the boards down with a little clamp. I didn't want to do that up here. I wanted more of a solid mechanical connection, so I decided to use Cortex screws that are screwed through the face of the board. Now, Cortex has a patented driver that drives a screw in, uh, countersinks it, and prepares a hole for, for a plug that they provide that matches the decking, even the grain. So once you line it up and put that plugging in, you don't even see that fastener. You can always take it out if you need to, if you need to service. You can pull them out, take the screws out, put the board back in. It's a great system. So it comes together with the AZAC boards and I love the end result and it looks fantastic. Um, don't forget to accommodate all your rough-in. Before this stage where the decking goes down, you gotta make sure all your wiring's in place. If you wanna extend any receptacles, uh, in, anywhere, speaker wires, we've run speaker wires. I've also accounted for landscape lighting. Uh, I'm doing landscape lighting on this rooftop, low voltage. Uh, the brains of the system is right here. This is a controller. The product is from Inlight. Inlight is a fantastic company. To me, they're a design company. What they produce is so heavily designed. Uh, I love the end result. The product is not only quality, it looks amazing. So they've got this driver here, this controller. It's got a light sensor in it so it can operate based on where the sun is, sunrise, sundown. 
And then it's all about the fixtures. So on the wall, we're going to put in some uh, wall mounted fixtures. These things are a vertical directed light. So you've got a light fixture on the bottom. You've got an LED fixture on top. It mounts on the wall, directs light up and down. The thing about landscape lighting is you don't want to walk out and have it hit you in the face. You want spots of light that are indirect. You don't necessarily want to see the source. And then throughout the rest of the deck, I'm using this bollard here, which sits on the ground. I love the fixture, so I don't want to hide it, but I love the fact that the gimbal inside moves. So you can direct the light downwards, so it casts light on the ground, lights up the decking, gives you a little bit of light around, you see some of the architecture. We're going to have hits of light in other places as well, but when it's all done, it's going to look spectacular. We are well into day three, onto the finishing stuff. We've made these planter boxes. Pressure treated lumber clad on the outside with the decking material. Now these bowls, environmental speakers are going to go into these planter boxes. They're going to be embedded in the dirt uh, up to that point basically. So all you'll see is this and then foliage around. On this side we've got another planter box right here. This one's going to get pushed up against this wall. This wall is getting ready to be clad with the decking material as well. So we've framed it as well with pressure treated lumber. We've got this landscape cloth on top because when you look through the grooves and the spacing between between the decking boards. I don't want to see anything. It'll all be black and behind. We've made an indent here for the television. Our Sunbright Outdoor TV is going to go right into there. It's going to be almost flush with that cladding. You see we've got a little cap on top that deflects all the water so it doesn't run into the wall. When this is done, this planter box will get pushed back here. Then these in-light fixtures that we talked about before, they're going to mount centered on the TV here. And these cast light upwards and downwards on either side of the TV. Again, hits a light throughout. Once this is all done, we get into some of the finishing details, get the furniture in here, and we're rolling. As you come out this door, you land on this landing space. It's a transitional space. It's somewhat useless, but I chose to design it to have this island here. This island is from Ikea. I love this thing. Stainless steel on the bottom, wood on top. What a great place to put drinks out and food out. It's got drawers. If you have bottle openers, accessories, they can go inside there, and some shelves on the bottom. It's a great addition to this otherwise useless space. Now when you're designing your spaces, make sure you plan ahead. I've got a gas outlet right here in the event that someday I want to put a barbecue beside this or even replace this with a barbecue, I can do that. As we move along, I designed this space like an interior space, just like a family room. I wanted different elements and I want everything to have continuity. These rock beds you see, they can't travel around, they connect everything. The color is important. I used beach pebble that's white. I love that hit of white in this dark decking. On either side, we got these planter boxes. They're fiberglass and in those are these grasses. These tall grasses offer a lot of warmth and height in this space. Now I did the rock beds for two reasons. One, the architectural and design element of it and two, all my electrical connections, whether it's speakers, whether it's lighting or electrical for outdoor plugs, are all inside of there. Easy access for service down the road. Beyond that rock bed is this lounge area, another small area in the decking that has this lounger. Now behind that you'll see another rock bed that again ties that architectural element together. These planter boxes flank the seating area, one on this side, one at the other side. These are made of the same composite material that I made the decking out of. I used Azek uh, deck boards. Now there's a reason for that. I use the vintage series, it's called Dark Hickory and I use solid boards. The Azek material is a fantastic material for outdoors. It, it gets sun all day. It gets beat up all day and I didn't want a material that I'd have to maintain over the time that I own this place. So these boards are fantastic. There's just one thing you have to consider when designing a space using these boards. They expand and contract slightly in the heat of the sun. Uh, the longer the board, the more the expansion. The boards come 20 feet. If I were to use 20 foot boards, they'd expand a lot. So I cut them up into 10 foot sections. I put some bands in the middle to break it up. It creates a nice design and also answers the problem to the expansion and contraction. Now it's minimal and it won't really affect the product as it sits out here. But it's going to look beautiful for a long time. I did these planter boxes using the same material. We've got a variation of grasses here and you'll see this guy here. This is a Bose environmental speaker. It's a garden speaker and I love these because when you've got an environment like this where you have neighbors, you'll notice a lot of people automatically put speakers on the walls. That directs the sound right out to your neighbors above your head and I don't want that. I want to contain the sound here where we're sitting. So these environmental speakers 
direct the sound outwards and downwards so it surrounds you. One on this side, one on that side. You can't even feel where the sound comes from, but it really adds to the ambiance of the space. The sitting area is extremely important. It's an outdoor family room. The furniture we pick for here has to be sensible. It's got to be extremely uh, comfortable and it needs to be versatile. You have to be able to get it up here easily and then you have to be able to put it away at the end of the season. I chose these units from Jardin de Ville. They're modular and I love that aspect. They've got an aluminum frame that's lightweight, individual pieces that group together, and then you've got the cushions on top. The cushions are very comfortable and they're outdoor fabric and the foam is a high quality outdoor foam. A sofa here, a love seat there, a chair there, rounds out the seating area, everything's grounded together nicely with an outdoor rug. In the center we've got this coffee table. The coffee table is a modular unit itself, again lightweight with an aluminum frame, but it's got a porcelain slab on top and the porcelain slab is only around five millimeters thick, very durable, beautiful marble pattern inside, I love the look. You'll see everything is white. It ties nicely to the architectural elements around. That hits of white in the garden beds create that continuity within this space. Now we've got some additional components like this light here adds a lot of height to this space. I don't want too many components that are tall but a few round off the space nicely. A poof here and this beanbag chair which I love. Very comfortable because when it's turned around it's a great seat to sit and watch TV. Now speaking of that TV let me show you that. On this side we've got the second planter box that matches the decking material, another speaker, more plant material, warms the space up, surrounds you with sound, and on this back wall you'll notice that we took the decking material up on the wall. Same installation, same look, but it just carries that up on the wall, wraps around the door around the side there. It just ties everything together and it gives me a backdrop for this beautiful TV to sit in. To put a TV on a beige wall by itself would not look great, so I chose to do this. It blends the TV in and it hides it nicely. Now I framed it out like this, gave me a little bit of space for the, for the mount on the back, but I love the fact that it's sitting about three inches off this paneled wall because I'm going to get a custom cover made with snaps all around so I can cover it when not in use. It's a Sunbright TV, it's made for the outdoors, that's great, but I don't want to abuse that. I want to cover it up when I can so that I can extend the life of it as much as possible. On either side we've got these fixtures. These are the in-light light fixtures that are wall mounted. I love the fact that they cast the light up and down on the wall and at night you've got this triangular cast of light top and down it looks beautiful. None of the fixtures really shine light right into your face. They're indirect. They highlight your path where you're walking especially the ones on the ground and then we've got accent lights inside the planter boxes highlighting the foliage around the space. When working on your own space, make sure you take the time and design it well. That time spent in the design phases is really valuable. And then when it comes to construction, don't cheap out on senseless elements. Make sure you spend the money where it needs to be spent. That way you'll create a space that not only looks great, functions well, and will last you a long time. Hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe to my channel.